All right, so we're going to solve by substitution. We're solving our system of linear equations. Um, so the directions from your um, intro video said to solve for the loneliest variable. Basically, you want to have either x equals or y equals before you do any substituting. So in this case, we have both x equals and y equals. I'm going to focus on the x equals because we can see that we can see that x just equals a 2. Go for the more basic one. That's just going to be the easier way to do the problem. So we can see that x equals 2. I put a box around it. Now we're going to substitute this into the top equation. We can substitute it in for the y or for the x, but I hope it makes sense that we're going to substitute it in for the x because that's what x equals. So that's why it's called substitution. We're substituting one equation into the other equation. What that does is it gives us an equation with only one variable, which lets us solve for that variable. So I plugged in a 2 for the x. y is already solved for, so we just have to simplify it. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6, plus 2, and negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. So we got our y. If you notice, we already had our x from the beginning also. It said x equals 2, so that's our ordered pair, 2 comma negative 4. Now, of course, we're going to start you off with a more basic one. They're not always that basic, but that wasn't too bad, right? All right, let's look at example 2. Again, solving for the lone... The, when I say the loneliest variable, and when I would teach this in class, I used to play a song called One is the Loneliest Number by Three Dog Night. Maybe you know it, maybe you don't. Anyway, um, so you want to get a variable alone. You don't want a number in front of it. So we see that we have a Y equals and a Y equals. So we're set there. We don't actually have to solve for the loneliest variable because it's already solved for. And we're going to choose one of those. So I'm just going to go ahead and choose the top one. So y equals 2x plus 10. Put a box around this. This gets substituted into the bottom equation. Should it go in for the x or should it go in for the y? Well, because it said y equals, we're going to put it in for the y. So we're replacing the y with that 2x plus 10. And then we continue to write the rest of our equation equals negative 3x plus 5. And now we have an equation with only x's, which means we can get our x's together and solve for that. Whoa, solve for the x. So we'll get our x's on the same side with addition, because of that negative 3x. So we have 5x plus 10 equals 5. Let's go ahead and subtract 10 from both sides. 5 minus 10 is negative 5. And then divide both sides by 5, and x equals negative 1. So we have half of our answer. Now we just need the other half. So if you notice with substitution, I'm, I always put a box around the thing that I'm substituting into the other equation. Here's why. Well, here's part of the reason why. Once you get your answer, x equals negative 1, all you have to do is plug that back in to your box. So it says y equals 2x plus 10. Well, we know what x is, so 2 times negative 1 plus 10. So y equals a negative 2 plus 10, and negative 2 plus 10 is 8. That's going to be the easiest spot to plug your variable back in. So I always box it out, and then I know that that's where my variable goes in the end. So our final solution is the ordered pair, negative 1 comma 8. And we just solved by substitution.